Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to uh, go over what auto layouts are really quickly and I'm going to do a small exercise to illustrate it in an actual real life example. Alright, right now I'm going to quickly go over all of the um, auto layout options just to kind of uh, demonstrate what it can do and then I'm going to move on to the actual exercise or like a real life practical example. So what is auto layout? Auto layout is essentially um, the ability for us to um, create uh, a dynamic way to um, resize and move objects within a parent container. So for instance, imagine we have um, uh, three objects, so the, these guys here, within this um, frame. So if we want to create this as an auto layout, we can hold shift and press A or hit the uh, plus over here when you've selected that frame. So let's do that. Um, and now, as you can see, it kind of aligned these evenly. So what it's doing is it's saying, okay, we're going to align everything um, together and provide the space, all this pink stuff here accordingly. So let's look at each option individually. So the first thing we notice is that we get two arrows. Arrow down means we're gonna align things in a, a, a column. So we're gonna align it vertically and arrow right means we're gonna align things horizontally or in a row. So as you can see, if we click on the arrow down, everything goes in a column. And then we click on the arrow right, everything is inside a row. So what happens when you add items to an auto layout? So for example, if we want to add this square to the auto layout, you can drag it in between all of these elements. If we want to drag it in the very start, we can do that over here. Or if we want to move it across, you can do that using your mouse by dragging the object, or you can use the arrow key to move it across however you want. You can even use the layer panel on the left and you can say, let's say we want to move this second guy at the very right, we move it all the way down and now he's over there. So to illustrate, I'll change the color and now we'll move it, let's move it all the way to the left. There he is, he's all the way to the left. All right, so let's move on to the spacing properties with an auto layout. So the this number here is the space between items property, which is the gap between all of the items. So as you can see, we were hovering over this purple little handle and it's showing us all of the space between like this dude here, this square and these other two dudes, we are maintaining a space of 107 pixels, which is listed over here. So if we wanna change that, we can move the handle around. It's not gonna, it's not very precise. So, so I wanna really do it this way. I just go into here, select that and say, let's say we want 16 pixels in between each one. Let's do 16. There we have it. Now there's 16 pixels between each of the items. Now the next two values is the um, uh, space on the left and the right and the space between the bottom and the top um, with between these elements. So for instance, um, we have uh, right now 151 horizontal padding, which is the space between the left and the right. So you can see it's 151 bit on the left here and it is 151 on the right. So if we wanna change this, let's just say, I wanna say 32. We're gonna make 32 pixels and you can see the actual parent frame is adjusting its size as well. This is the beauty of auto layouts. You don't need to constantly go in and you know adjust your frame. So we've made that 32 pixels and now we want to do the same for the top and bottom. Let's do 32. And now we have 32 pixels between the largest element and the uh, canvas. So 32 pixels between here and here, but this one is 32 and 49. That means that there's a bit of space between this one. So what does that mean for our um, objects? That means that right now this object within the frame has a fixed height value. If we want this guy to grow taller um, based on the um, size of the actual frame, we can do that. We can say, uh, instead of fixed, we can say fill container. So what it's gonna do is, it's going to take up the remainder of the space between 32 pixels of uh, padding on the top and 32 pixels of padding on the bottom. We're gonna take that space and add it to the height of this object. So we've selected it, we hit the uh, drop down and we say fill container. And as you can see, this guy just grew. Um, I wish I could do that. Um, all right, so that's the property uh, that you get when you select the uh, child object within an auto layout frame. Um, same goes for um, the width as well. You can say fixed width or fill container. 
So for instance, um, if uh, we add more width to this container here and we've select, let's select this guy over here and we can see that there's 136 pixels uh, of space and we know that we've set 32 pixels of padding here. That means there's 104, 104 um, pixels of kind of space that's not being utilized within this frame. So if we want this guy to grow in width, something I don't want to happen to myself, is we, we select the dropdown and we hit fill container. And there you go, this guy just grew in width to take up that remainder of the space. So that's essentially the uh, constraining options for the uh, child um, objects within that auto layout frame. Now with the um, horizontal vertical padding, you can set, set different values. For instance, if we want 32 pixels on the left and 64 on the right, you can just add a comma here and do 64. And then you'll have left 32, uh, right 64. Uh, you can do the same for the top and bottom. You can say 32 pixels for the top and 64 for the bottom. And you can see that's left, right, top and bottom. Alternatively, you can just click on this independent padding um, button and that will give you the independent values over here. So we've got the left, right, top and bottom over here. Now let's look at the uh, alignment options. So within an auto layout, your child objects do not have their constraint options anymore because they're inside an auto layout. They don't need constraining options. What instead we do is align the items within. So once you've selected your auto layout, you have a square here, which allows you to align items um, in a particular direction. So for instance, let's say our frame is like this. Right now, everything's aligned to the top left. Now we can align it to any side we want. So for instance, if we want to top right, we hit there, bottom right, we can even align them to the center. You can play around with these options here. Another useful alignment option um, inside the advanced properties of an auto layout is the ability to uh, align to text baselines. So for instance, we've got um, an auto layout here. It's all centered. Um, it's aligning uh, to the center of each object. So we've got a hello, we've got a, a man over there waving, and we've got a, a world over here. Now, if I want this to be in line with the baseline of the text, so this blue line over here, you can select the entire frame, hit the ellipses, and over here you have a text baseline alignment um, option. This only exists if you have text inside the frame. So if we're going to uh, hit the tick over here, that's going to align that or any object to the baseline um, of the actual text. Now, another thing to note, there are two types of auto layouts in regards to um, how the actual parent container uh, flows. So it can either be fixed. So for instance, we set the size of an auto layout or we can tell the container, hey, you know what? We want you to hug the content, meaning that the size of the container of the auto layer container will be dependent on the child size. So for instance, if we do hug contents and we say that's for the horizontal um, resizing and for the vertical resizing also hug content. Now, if we make any uh, of the child objects bigger or smaller, the container will um, take on that space. So for instance, let's make that bigger. As you can see, the container is maintaining its space of 32 um, pixels padding right and left, 32 pixels um, top and bottom. Let's say we want to um, make these um, uh, objects here. We want them to uh, take on the entire space of the um, frame without adjusting their size. So for instance, we want this one to, to be to, at the very left, this one to be at the very right. How would we do that? We would select the frame. There's a drop, there's ellipses drop down here. You click on that. And instead of the mode, uh, packed mode, we select space between mode. So what that does, it basically um, all the space, uh, the, the empty space that you give an auto layout, it gets distributed between the items. So you're now ignoring that fixed um, gap space between value, you're now just kind of evenly distributing space in between all of the items. So once we hit that, as you can see, all of these items are now kind of evenly um, spaced away uh, to the edge of the screen. So you can see this 32 pixels um, on the left, 32 pixels on the right, and then 
every item that you add will distribute space in between all of the other items evenly. So let's say we add a few more, you can see they're all kind of sharing that even space. Whoops, there you go, 67.6, 67.6. It's all going to be the same. Um, you can do that alignment option for horizontal and then you can align them and uh, you can do it for vertically as well as just say we've got it like that and you can space them in between. So once we start deleting these things, you can see the space gets shifted through. Now, one more thing to be conscious of when you're creating auto layout, say you want your auto layout to um, have a stroke. So we've created these three objects and we're going to convert them into an auto layout. So let's hold shift and press A. We've created an auto layout and I wanna give it a stroke. What's happening here is the stroke is not getting considered into the auto layout. So what's, these objects are actually um, taking precedence over the stroke and the stroke doesn't get computed into the calculations for the spacing. So what you, in order to rectify this, you can select the auto layout frame, hit the um, ellipses and where it says strokes, it says excluded. So what you can do is you can select include in layout and that's going to reduce the size of the um, objects or increase the size of the parent frame, depends on the constraints you've set on the sizing um, properties for that particular object. All right, let's look at a actual real life example. So I've created a mock-up of a banking app. Um, so let's look at the elements that we have. So we wanna add a bunch of buttons um, below here. We wanna add our um, a table of uh, contents underneath those buttons. So this is our header and then we've got our actual um, list items here as well. These ones over here are going to be our little quick filters um, that I'm gonna use the stacking options for, um, which is another uh, advanced feature <clears throat> within the auto layouts um, uh, properties. So let's get these buttons and let's move them inside of our design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and hit A to make an auto layout out of this. Right now it's using a default spacing and default alignment based on where the items were located originally before the auto layout. We're gonna change that. We're gonna say, let's align this horizontally and let's make sure that it's set to top right, uh, top left, and then make it 16 pixels of padding in between each of these buttons. And we're going to make sure that it's aligned with the content over here and let's make it, let's say 16 pixels below. So now we've set up our button. So now if we, if we do need to add more buttons, we can simply put them inside. So for instance, let's, uh, let's say that we wanna duplicate this one. We can do that and this button moves to the right. So we don't have the hassle of moving each individual thing or the parent frames to match what content is inside. Now let's move on to the list. So we want to add this list um, under these buttons. Let's uh, grab all of these items, um, create an auto layout around them by hitting shift A. Again, the space is default based on the space that was originally between each of these. So we're going to set it to zero to make them flush and drag them into our design. So right now uh, we want to align it to the very edge of the screen and give it 16 pixels of padding here. So you can see that it the width of these items is smaller than the width of the container. So the incorrect way to adjust this width would be to grab all of these items here and then start, you know, um, dragging them towards the edge of the screen. Um, that wouldn't be very flexible, um, especially if you're using auto layout. So what you'd need to do instead is select the entire auto layout, adjust it to the size of the container. So now this entire frame, this auto layout is controlling the size of the children. Not yet, that's because we haven't adjusted the child property, the resizing property. So for instance, right now we can um, hit enter to select all of the children inside this auto layout. And you can see it's set to fix. That means that we're fixing these children at 337 pixels in uh, width. So we're gonna select that. And instead of um, having fixed, we're gonna say fill container. So once we selected fill container, it's going to match the size of the actual container. And our container is 376 pixels in width with no padding on the left and right. So all of these children are going to be 376 pixels in width. The last thing I wanna do is um, add these two little uh, quick filter options to the right hand side 
uh, top right hand corner of this panel and I want to do it in a way where they stack on top of each other so for instance I want to grab them like that and I want that left one to be on top because that's just how I want to do it because it's all aligning to the right so let's say I'm, I'm putting this up here uh, let's have a look at 3030 and now I want to put this inside an auto layout how would I do that I would hit shift a and as you can see what's happening is the space um, gets adjusted to be zero because auto layers um, default uh, space between um, option is set to zero if it's in the negative so for instance if we want to change this to overlap these items you just decrease the um, space to be in the negative so let's do it minus 12 and as you can see they are now stacking on top of each other however there's one problem that problem is the top one um, is on the right and the one behind it is on the left we want to reverse that order and auto layouts always places the rightmost one when it's horizontally aligned at the top and the bottommost one at the bottom so how do we reverse this uh, stacking order what we can do is we can select this auto layout frame go to the ellipses and then here we have um, canvas stacking option so here it even gives you an example uh, we, it's always default to last on top we're going to reverse it to first on top and now we've set that one to be at the at the top now we can go a step further here um, let's say we want to make this design more scalable more dynamic when we're working um, with this for example we're creating this for a prototype and we want to make sure that uh, when we're rapidly iterating we're doing less work less adjustments so we want to automate everything so for instance let's say if we want to add more items here and you, you know you add another one it's moving things to the right and then you have to go back in here and adjust this that's going to be super annoying for you what you can do instead you can create this as a whole div a whole element um, or frame in figma so what i could do is i could look at this and say okay uh, these two are related we're going to make these two into an auto layout just in case so we've got 12 pixels there and now i'm going to grab that auto layout and grab this one and I'm going to create an auto layout from this so what I've done is I've created a, a, a frame with a space of 212 pixels in between which is not something I want because again if I am adding these items they're always going to be moving across because it needs to maintain that space of 212 pixels instead we want this to be dynamic so what we're going to do is we're going to select this whole frame we're going to go into um, the uh, spacing mode and we're going to select space between now in what i like to do instead of going into here i like to select this square here so once i've selected that you hit x and that will change the, the um, alignment type to, to um, space between and if you hit x again it's going to adjust it to um, directional alignment so i'm going to do space between so now we have a space of auto which means that it's going to take space depending on the content. So once we start adding content in, let's say we want to add another two of these, it's going to start adding it and taking up that space that's set to auto, which creates a dynamic design for us. And now we don't need to worry about um, spacing and adjustments whenever we need to update our design. Likewise, if we uh, if somebody says, all right, what happens if my account is in the millions so we add it in and now you can see that our design is dynamic enough to account for that as well we don't have to do any adjustments we can add as much text as we want and our design does not break i hope you found this show useful um, if you did please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks again for watching